and welcome to episode 30 of Down to Watch. I am your host, Camila, and I am joined by a special guest today. It's triumphant return, Andrew Wolf. Hello, internets. Yay! Yay. Happy to have you back. Well, thank you for having me um, back. You are back for more Ryan Gosling goodness. I can't get enough of the guns. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's a good thing, too, because we've got several more of his movies to go through. <laughs> <laughs> but today, we have finally gotten to my absolute favorite Ryan Gosling movie. Probably in my top five of my favorite movies all. Mars and Earth. It's such a swag, I can't wait. It's going to be excellent. All right, so let's get into that. Um, all right. Otherwise, um, anything, what have what you been up to, Andrew? Nothing. Holidays came and went. Yeah. Were they good to you? Were they, was it yeah. a good time? I got a couple of board games, my board game geek. Nice. Yeah. I got, are are uh, you like the RPG? It was it tabletop? Yeah. Uh, I tabletop. Because um, I know there's like a, a whole sub genre. Like I like board games like yeah. a lot, but them like, you know, gestures or seen it and it's trivial pursuit, stuff yeah. like that. But then like there's this whole new level of them that are, I guess, similar to Dungeons and Dragons, but not. Kind of. I, I'm, I've, I've played Dungeons and Dragons. Um, <laughs> I don't have like a level 80 rogue elf or anything but um <laughs> words <laughs> yeah no um uh, my fiance for christmas got me machi koro it's a uh, basically you're building a city and you have to buy things and you roll dice and you oh. get coin yeah yeah so that's good and she found this really awesome game it's called kahuna uh-huh. it's like risk but it doesn't take three hours and relationships aren't <laughs> ruined um it's like these 10 little islands and you play cards to get bridges between them and if you own more than half you claim the island really so yeah it's nice huh yeah okay well i'm always i like i love board game board game night so whenever you have a game night i will let you know and vice versa because that's my thing man i love it um i I heard that there's something that goes on here in pittsburgh some some organization game something board game and they just basically they gather at uh monroeville convention center and they just have like a board which is like everybody just a, a bunch of adults sitting around playing board games of that all types. sounds awesome yeah it's yeah. like i think it's like ten dollars or something to get in oh, and you nice. just go and just like play all night speaking and your last name is wolf so somebody yes. told me about this game called wolf have you heard of this or uh, werewolf werewolf i've heard of werewolf yes it's like a party game and yeah. you can kill people yeah it's yeah it's kind of like um uh resistance have you ever played that or heard, seen that um Will Wheaton did an excellent tabletop on it. Basically, you're all playing in a future where corporations have taken over the government. Yes, the future. (laughs) Um, Sounds an awful lot like the present. I know. (laughs) Um, You're like a band of resistance, Mm. but there's a couple among you who are loyalists. Okay. So it's bluffing and deception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's really intense. Like... (laughs) You get anxious. You're like, crap, no. <laughs> um, yeah, there's that. My favorite right now um, is Ticket to Ride. And hmm. Have you heard that? No. That? Like These are all, like, this type of board games are all kind of new to me. I, I will teach you. Um, <laughs> oh, teach me the ways. Exactly. <laughs> you, it's a giant map of the U.S., and the whole point is you're trying to get from point A to point B, mm-hmm. and you collect cards and play cards to claim train routes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's really cool, and there's, like, a tracker on the board for your points. I, I really enjoy it. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have, definitely have to get into one of those. We started playing, I think uh, the closest one we have to something like that is something called, it's called Zombies. And it's just basically you're surviving, like, the zombie apocalypse. And, you know, you like to pick up the cards, like, the survival cards or whatnot. And you yeah. get, like, so many bullets that you can use. And there's zombie attacks, like, if somebody lands on something and a bunch of dice rolling and stuff. It took me a while to wrap my brain around it. But I got it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, Lars and the Real Girl. All right, then. There's going to be spoilers, guys. Um, It came out. How many years ago? 2007. Get on that. Exactly. Uh, The plot summary is, a delusional young man strikes up an unconventional relationship with a doll he finds on the internet. Directed by Craig Gillespie and written by Nancy Oliver. And um, I did a little bit of digging, and uh, well, I looked on IMDb, and uh, (laughs) at Craig Gillespie's filmography and what other things he has directed, and um, one of my other, like, really 
favorite movies, Fright Night, the 2011 one. Oh, the remake? Yeah. With David Tennant? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Which is just an awesome, another one of my faves. I love that movie. Um, our personal histories with this movie. I don't recall. I don't think I saw this in the theater. I probably saw it on DVD just because Ryan, Ryan Gosling was in it. And um, I absolutely loved it. I went into it thinking, eh, this could be really weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> What's going to happen with him with this doll? Yeah. But it turned out it was not the case. And it was just, I just absolutely loved it. And probably watch it at least once a year. <laughs> yeah, uh, my personal history with this film goes back uh, 28 hours. <laughs> I You had never seen it. No, I wanted to. And then it just always like. You know, I wanted to go in theaters and wasn't anywhere around me, uh-huh. and I was young and didn't know about, like, the great single screen, like, independent theaters right. like the Oaks or Hollywood or um, Manor and Swore Hill, yeah. which I love. <laughs> um, and so, and I would see it on Netflix. I'm like, I want to watch that. And then, you know, never did. Something else would come up. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I watched it yesterday. Interesting. Huh. All right. This will be fun. Um, all right, our, our cast of characters and actors. You have Ryan Gosling, of course, who plays Lars, who is this 27-year-old um, guy who's just kind of, he's he's socially awkward. He's on the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> even though the spectrum wasn't invented in 2007, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yes. Um, he's very, yeah, like he's not simple as to where, like he's an intelligent man. Yeah. And he's just not, he's able to take care of himself. But he would just rather be alone, and he's just kind of um, not with, like, anybody, really. Uh, we also have Emily Mortimer plays Karen, Yay. Lars's sister-in-law, who is married to, and Karen is pregnant, and uh, who's married to Lars's brother, played by Paul Schneider. His name is Gus, who does a great job of just being awkward, like, just being he's uncomfortable. A he's a dick. <laughs> yeah. I did not like Gus. Yeah. Um, we also have Kelly Garner plays Margot, who works with Lars. And also we find she develops a little crush on him. What else is she in? I don't know. I have to look because she's one of those people that, you know, she pops up in a yeah. lot of things. And she's very, she has a very fam- distinctive face. Yeah. And um, Patricia Clarkson. Like, who doesn't love her? Oh, I think somewhere. Yeah. First, Patricia Clarkson. <laughs> like, she's like, yes. right. It's like. Susan Sarandon, Patricia Clarkson. Yeah. <laughs> um, she plays Dagmar, who is the town psychologist, or who's also um, a primary care physician. But... Which is insane to me. <laughs> it's convenient to the plot. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, who but... double specializes in family practice and psychology? That's all I want to know. Well, they say that sometimes, or what did, uh, they, there was something um, that Karen said, and it was like, you know, she has to be both this far north. And, oh, I, don't, yeah. and I don't know exactly where they're supposed to be. And mm, I didn't I'm catch. I'm like. Wisconsin, Minnesota. Yeah. Although there wasn't really there any. There were no accents. Yeah, there was no accents whatsoever. <laughs> but um, you get the idea that they're in a very, very small town. So, um, yeah, so, like, we get a, a real um, a feeling for exactly what type of person Lars is from Jump Street. Like, he lives in the garage apartment behind the house yeah. that his brother and sister-in-law live in, um, which is also their fam- their childhood house. So, like, Lars is standing in the window, and the sister, and Karen comes out to talk to him, and he's, like, hiding from her. Exactly. <laughs> he wants um, no parts of this conversation. In fact, I recognized about the first ten seconds of this movie, because it was the first Ryan Gosling won't eat his cereal I saw. <laughs> yes. With the scarf. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what that's from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, she comes out to invite him to breakfast, because he never comes and hangs out with him, and... It's just the whole conversation. Like, I think the reason why I love this so much is that just Ryan just takes on a completely different character. We've never seen him do before, and he does it so well. He's like so endearing. And he does a really yeah. A, I wrote in my notes: agoraphobic Gosling equals mustache, <laughs> awkward pauses, and creepy blinking. Yes, there's a lot of blinking. There's a lot of blinking by him, and I can never tell. Like, it's a lot does he have something in his eye heavy or? Blinking. And he's just like trying to not. Say like she wants him to come to breakfast, and he's just like, oh, you know, I gotta go to avo- church. Yeah, trying to avoid it every single way possible, yeah. and it's just not. So it's just there's so many. Uh, yeah, there's just um, that's kind of what we're dealing with. Um, and he ends up not going to breakfast. <laughs> he's he's there's doing a lot of you know hiding and running away. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> it's just funny to the whole thing. And even like the next scene when he's in church, he's sitting all the way in the back and there's a kid who's got his toys lined up on the, the pew and one of them has fallen down and he goes to pick it up and, and he he's drops like, it. Yes. And just like his whole yeah. face covers. He's like doing everything in his power not to make any noise and it ah, drops. I brought attention <laughs> to myself. Crap. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me. So he has some sort of job. I don't know what they do. Yeah. He works in a cubicle and he's got With this, a douche yeah. baby guy. Yeah. Really weird cubicle mate who's got like, you know, and who basically he's the one who introduces Lars to this website with, yeah. the, with the life-size dolls. Yeah. I'll, and somehow in this movie with Ryan Gosling and, you know, a mustache, a man without a mustache is the creepiest person <laughs> in the movie. And Ryan Gosling this has a mustache. Yeah, like, Ryan Gosling has a mustache and has a relationship with a doll. But no, he's not the creeper. Exactly. It's this dude. It's this dude with the weird hair. And it's uncomfortable clothing and the threatening of the teddy bears. Yeah. And it's just... And his weird rock music. Yeah. And who the hell is, is listening to music at that level in a cubicle? Seriously? Not, I'm not like, you know, you know... Without headphones? No, I listen to headphones. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. See, I... I'll, I'll talk about my work situation off mic, but yeah. <laughs> Some of my cubicle makes don't listen to headphones, and it makes me mad. Headphones, people. Exactly. Uh, if it's not, people if like, we're in work right now, put on your headphones. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to disrupt your neighbor. unless you ha If you have an office, I have an office with a door, so I don't listen. I don't use headphones. No, you're lucky. I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, he just kind of offhandedly talks to him about this website, and uh, Lars... Yeah, he doesn't seem to be that interested in the whole thing, but then we, like, fast forward to six weeks later, and he's getting, like, this giant box delivered. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> so you just kind of wonder. I'm like, okay, well, I'm assuming that's the real girl of uh, the real girl. Yes. But, okay. There's a lot of... There's no explanation as to why. He no. Did. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Yeah, you're yeah. kind of, you're left with a lot of trying to fill in the blanks as to what the hell was going th going on in his mind yeah. when he decided to go ahead and order this doll. Was it always just like, oh, yeah. It, was it always this fantasy in his head, like, I am meeting this person online. I am dating on a, on a dating website and blah, <laughs> blah, blah. So he gets this doll, and it's, he's so excited. And um, to the point where he, before he even opens the, the box, he's, like, prepping. He's, like, trying on several different... Sweaters. sweaters. That's a nice sweater. <laughs> Doing his hair. Brushing his teeth. He's getting all prepped. And he goes to uh, tell his tell Gus and Karen uh, he's got a visitor. And he's super stoked about it. And they're super excited. Like, oh, my God. He's got somebody. He's got company. He's got Yay. friends. And it's a girl? What? What? I have a visitor. You have a... Uh... Yeah. The visitor? Mm -hmm. the... It's great. Yeah. And she's not from here. She? Yeah. <laughs> wow, what do you, what do you, what do you know? Did, where, where did you meet this person? On, on the internet? Yeah, well, everybody's doing that now. She doesn't speak much English, though. Uh -huh. It's okay. It's, the, it's really the same with the guys at work. It's it's not that big a deal. Okay. Um, well, yeah, well, you know, she's in a wheelchair, so I just don't want her to feel weird about it. So oh, what? No. We don't no. care? Okay. And I have to ask you, really, I know that it's a really big favor. Yeah. Well... She's just really religious, and because we're both young and single, it just doesn't feel right for us to stay in the garage alone oh, together. Oh, no. yeah. we'll, we'll put her in no. the pink room. She can sleep here. In the pink room? Yeah. Okay. Sure. And there are new towels. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give us half an hour to, you know, pick up and, 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 and get them in the oven. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. Get the place ready. No! Let's get started. 
also like the fact that he throws in that she used to be she's a missionary. Yeah. <laughs> He's very religious, <laughs> Lars. But I feel like he just got that off the website as she is a missionary physician. <laughs> I didn't put that together until right now. Oh my god. So <laughs> they get all prepped up too. She's like, Oh, you know, just give me a half hour to clean up the house and put something on dinner. Lars yeah. is a girlfriend. He's not do- Oh. <laughs> it's a doll. Does everyone else see a doll? <laughs> and she's dressed, you know, very the knee high boots, the fishnets. Yes, this the sequin top and like a, another fishnet top over that. Yeah. And this like heavy makeup and and like his and Karen and Gus are just sitting there just like dumbfounded. <laughs> He's crazy. Oh god. And like yeah, while they're in the kitchen serving up food, like Gus is already putting Lars away. Yeah. He's like, I can't afford to put him in some place, but what what are we gonna do? Yeah, my favorite part of that whole scene is but Karen, she's not gonna eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually setting a place for this doll. And uh Lars is just having these conversations for her, with her. Uh he's not speaking, oh like Bianca, but like he'll lean in real close and like, oh, did, did you hear what she said? No, that was just isn't she just the sweetest? She's so sweet. <laughs> She's just the sweetest, and it's just, yeah, it's so crazy to me how this this happens. And um, and, but Lars is already behaving a lot less antisocial. Yes. And I, and I got I'm sure that they're just like torn between like, okay, he's crazy, but. It's getting him out of his shell, Mm -hmm. and there's plink plank music playing, so we know it's a romantic comedy. (laughs) There's plink plank music playing. Yeah. (laughs) Not like that. Although, I was, like, listening to it as the movie goes on, I'm like, where do I know this? And it dawned on me, it's oddly reminiscent of the Inside Out soundtrack. Really? Really. Huh. Listen to, like, the first, you know, minute of the movie, Uh and then... Go on Spotify or whatever and listen to the first, like, song from the Inside Out soundtrack. Interesting. I'm going to have to check and yeah. try that. That's which another, that movie. Oh, the feels. Oh, my God. I wasn't expecting to ball so hard on that oh damn God. thing. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> Not Friendship Island. <laughs> <laughs> which is a phrase I never thought I would say as an adult through tears. <laughs> Not Friendship Island. <laughs> uh <laughs> As, you know, repeat listeners know, I cry at everything, and I definitely cried at Inside Out. <laughs> I've seen it, like, eight times. Not really. really? No. no. I was exaggerating. I've seen it, like, four, three, four times. I just, I'm surprised you could imagine, you could go get through it. Oh, God. The first time I saw it, I was like, and the short before it. I don't think I saw the short. Did you see it in theaters? No. Okay. There's a short, and it, it's called Lava. Okay. And it's this volcano and he's, like, singing a song about how he wants somebody to love. And the tectonic plate shift, and as he dies, a new volcano comes up, and she sings his song, because she, um, it's like, oh my god, Pixar. What the hell? What the hell? Why are you making me cry over volcanoes? Oh my god. Yeah, that's much like the uh, first couple minutes of uh, up, up. Oh god. Which is still a better tw- love story than Twilight. Yes! yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, Kristen Stewart has never been better as Bianca. <laughs> oh. <Hey-oh>. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Kristen Stewart did an excellent job playing Bianca. Um, a lot of range, <laughs> lots of range from heavy makeup to not so heavy makeup to no makeup. Yeah. To almost sickly looking. <laughs> so um yeah, uh, Gus and Karen are still are just trying to figure out what the hell to do at this point, and um, they decide to take him to the doctor. Under the guise of taking Bianca to the doctor. Yes. Which is kind of adorable. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, they're treating this whole thing as if, like, he's a little kid. Like, if your kid came to you and was like, oh, my teddy bear is sick. Or I'm scared to go to the doctor. It's like, oh, well, let's take Teddy to the doctor. Yeah. Only (laughs) don't make him watch Teddy Goes to the Doctor on YouTube. Have you ever seen that? No, I didn't know that was Oh, God. (laughs) Um, Zay Frank, who I love, puts out this thing. It's like... Teddy goes to the doctor. First, the doctor shaves Teddy. Or first, the doctor uses sleeping gas to make Teddy go to sleep. And then he cuts open a teddy bear. And there's fake, there's organs and stuff in there. Oh, my God. It's hysterical. <laughs> it's like, this is Teddy's bonbon layer. This oh is, yeah. Oh, my God. Teddy's heart is broken. Oh, 
that's what happened. Teddy loved a bad boy. <laughs> like, oh, it's so good. It's so, so sick and so good. I love it. And then in Lawrenceville, that teddy bear shop yeah. creeps me the hell out every time I go by it. I am I'm convinced that it's got to be a front for something else. How has it been in business for so long? I don't know. Because especially if you go by it, they're recreating the scene of friggin' Alien, the yeah. chestburster with teddy bears. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? It's like, I don't think this is right. I yeah. just, and I don't know if they're ever open. They are never open. So it's like this is that's like the one thing outside of the bowling alley that has been here in Lawrenceville for like the longest time. Yeah, um, yeah that that's on my list of things that creep me out. That store and clowns. <laughs> oh, you have an actual clown oh, God, clown phobia. Yeah, was there a story that goes behind it? No, yeah. I just take clowns. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I hate mis- magicians. I don't magicians. Trust them. Don't trust them. Oh, you should. <laughs> Bit of a couple of coin out of here. What else can they pull out of there? I know, exactly. Yeah. Let's just, you know, calm down. <laughs> Let's keep our hands to ourselves here, mister. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So they, they go and they see the doctor. Uh, Bianca sees the doctor and they come up with this whole bruise of that she yeah. needs some treatments. Immediately, Gus is like, nope, he's crazy. Fix him. Yeah. And I wrote down in my notes, Gus is a dick. Yeah, he is kind of, he's behaving, like he's not having any of this. Yeah. And... You know, no offense to Paul Schneider, mm. um, but does he play any other characters? Like, than dicks. <laughs> than dicks. Like, his character on Parks and Rec was kind of a dick. Oh, really? Yeah. Probably not. He's. I guess he's been typecast. Maybe. Or he's just a dick. He's, yeah, or dick. he's just good at playing dicks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so like when they're in there and um, Dr. Dagmer is trying to explain to him that explain him, you know, it's not schizophrenia, he's not psychotic. He's it's a delusion. Yes, and I, I do love the, when Gus is like, what the hell is he doing with a delusion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might as well just said, just get rid of it. Just yeah. Just make it from him then. And so, yeah, Gus is just like really not having any of this. He's just like, you know, he's broken. We got to yeah, fix it. I'll say it again. Gus is a dick. Yeah, and yeah. Karen is trying on the flip Karen's side. Karen's like, she's well, trying to we pl- can... Yeah, her maternal instincts are kicking in, yes. and that she's pregnant. She's been like from the beginning, just trying to like get Lars to come hang out. She wants him to know that she, you know, he's a part of the family. Yeah, and she's trying to go along with this, and she's trying to make him feel accepted. And she just wants to to, to do this as easily as possible. She just doesn't want to blame him or anything like exactly. that. Exactly. She's trying to be very easy, and Gus is not. There's even a point where um they're at the breakfast table. I think it's the next day, and and um. Uh, Lars is, you know, they're having breakfast with Lars and Bianca, and he's yeah. he's talking to her, and uh, Gus says he's sick, and then Lars says that, oh, you know, Bianca was a nurse or trained as a nurse, yeah. and, and Gus is like, no, she wasn't. She's a she's a piece of plastic. She's a doll. You know, she's not real. This isn't a thing. And Lars just completely doesn't ignores it. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, there's something says something that Bianca said that was nice or sweet. God, yeah, God put me on earth to help people or something. Yeah, which is kind of true in a roundabout way it helps him i guess i don't know by the way so they come so cameron dagmore and gus come out of like the conference her office yes and there's our lars with bianca and bianca's got a kid who gives the man with the real doll a kid no yeah like who what mother is like Oh, sure, you can play with my child yeah. with your giant doll. So is she there for, is the mom there for an appointment to see Dagmar about her psychiatric I'm problems? I'm assuming. <laughs> because that is some stupid shit. Like, who, yeah, you're yeah. right. That's, who does that shit? There's no way in hell I would ever. I wouldn't uh, yeah. put my, I wouldn't allow him with my dogs. I just, <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, no shade, Lars, but no. With me outside the box not knowing what's going on in there. Yeah, no. Some rando in a waiting room. No, thanks. And then Gus does some research <laughs> online and brings up, like, the Real Girl website. And I think during the breakfast conversation, because, again, I haven't seen the movie, I'm like, why do I get the feeling that Gus is pro- at some point going to try to rape Bianca? Oh, God. I don't know why I got that. Oh, I'm- God. That would have gotten so dark. Oh, God. That would have been horrifying. Oh, been- my God. <laughs> I don't know why I got that, but I'm like, something's weird going on. He's doing way too much investigation. Exactly. Well, Karen does way too much investigation. Oh, yeah. Karen just straight up looks up her skirt. Yeah. Like, okay, Karen. <laughs> we need you to calm down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, we yeah we find out that Margot has a crush on Lars, and she keeps trying to, you know, hint to him that she wants to hang out and stuff. And 
just doesn't uh, ever really happen. Uh, yeah, okay, so, like, the scene after the ch- after church, like, in the very beginning, and he's talking to the other church-going lady who's taking the flowers out. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you have a girlfriend? He's like, no. She's like, well, are you gay? He's like, no. She's like, my grandson's gay. I know all about I know, the gays. I, I know all about that. That's no big deal. And so she gives him one of the flowers. He's like, here, it gives us someone nice. Yeah. And then Margot's kind of, like, standing there, and I feel like she heard what she yeah. said, and so she's waiting. She's like, hi, Lars. And he immediately just goes, he whips, whips the flower. Whips, just whips, like, whips it away. <laughs> It's adorable. <laughs> and, oh, the awkwardness. The awkwardness. Yes. Oh, and so I made a note of this. 38 minutes in, mm-hmm. when Karen's talking to her friends, that finally passes the Bechdel test. <laughs> you finally yes. you brought me on a movie that passes. <laughs> Thank God. Outstanding. Yes. So we get that out of the way. Yes. Yeah. It passes the Bechdel test. Um, so, yeah, so they start kind of doing their rounds about town. Um Telling people, to asking people to kind of play along with it. Yeah. And I guess this town is small enough as to where they'll do that. And it's also kind of a, test to, a testament to how much everybody cares about Lars. Yeah, actually, it's that, really sweet. That they're all just going to go along with it. Yeah, at one point, you know, Gus is on Ask.com. Remember Ask.com <laughs> yes. when that was the... It's like I was waiting for Ask Jeeves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, He's looking up delusions. And... Delusions versus mental, Ill- mental illness delusion. Yeah. Um, oh. So he's trying to do his research, I guess, and I mean, there's a there is a point where Gus kind of breaks down and he thinks that it's his fault. Yeah. Because apparently their backstory is that um, Lars is the younger brother, and their mom died. I'm going to assume in childbirth, or I th- I'm assuming, yeah, 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 because Gus at one point says you didn't know yeah. mom or something. Yeah, and so like I guess their dad was very sad essentially while they were growing up while. Um, Lars was growing up, and once Gus got the chance, that it, like he turned eighteen and moved the hell away, and left Lars there with sad dad. Yeah, and he felt guilty. He's now feeling guilty for that, thinking that you know he just that wasn't a good choice. <laughs> it's okay, Gus. It's okay. <laughs> you didn't know this was gonna happen, right? How could you have seen this? Exactly. How the internet you- wasn't around when you split. It's okay. <laughs> and um, and I think. And I don't know if this was a director's choice or if this is even true, but I started to notice little things about what Lars was wearing. Now, aside from, like, the the little blanket that was his baby blanket that his mom made for him, and he wears it as a scarf. But then he also, like, there's a couple scenes where he's wearing, like, a pink, clearly a woman's thermal top. Yeah, well, like, I noticed that. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm assuming that was his mom's, and there was even a point where he's wearing a. I, you see that he's wearing a woman's watch, like it's a very delicate. I did not notice that. Yeah, when he, the scene where he's given the pup, the the teddy bear, CPR. No, nope. <laughs> which I have notes about. <laughs> what are your notes about that? Um. <laughs> so there's a moment where, as some you know, some shenanigans, coworker shenanigans gone awry, the creepy, uh, Lars's creepy, cube cube mate has taken Margot's teddy bear and hung him with a USB noose. Yeah. <laughs> USB cord Which noose. I didn't even know you could make a noose out of a USB. <laughs> I'll just try that when work really gets me down next time. Um, my notes are, is that like a shtick or part of his delusion? Or is it just like him being like... I think he's just it, being cute. I hope. Is it him trying to pick up, pick her up? I or? think so. I think he's just trying to do something to make her smile. Okay. Which is kind of ironic in the sense that you know that he's you're, he's coming across that knowing yeah this teddy bear is not real and i'm going to give it cpr but it's not real i'm just doing this to make her smile and then in the meantime he's got like a real doll girlfriend yeah at home. <laughs> but watch i like oh also a fun one thing that um made me laugh i think at one point when creepy workmate dude is showing gus the website Mm. I think uh, or Lars at going Lars the website excuse me asks are you gonna get one and yes. he goes no I'm I'm tapped out I wish I I just tapped got a new one? Xbox yeah I'm like okay first off how <laughs> cheap were these things in 2007 yes. because I remember there was an article going around where they were like two grand yeah yeah the apparently the, this one actually for the production it cost six thousand dollars six what yeah. 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 What? Yeah. So I'm con- I'm also confused. Like, say 2007, how cheap was this Dow? Or 2007, how expensive were Xboxes? 
and how many did he buy? Like, uh, <laughs> I'm ass- maybe I'm assuming. Oh, I really can't buy another big ticket item above a hundred bucks. I guess so. Because I just bought an Xbox. Maybe that's it. But six thousand for that's what the fuck? Yeah, it's like seriously, that's just what. If you have that much money just lying around... You should be able to, to get a girlfriend. I'm pretty yeah. sure my wedding didn't cost $6,000. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, what we, that's how we do. <laughs> that, that's how we're doing, too. <laughs> Rented a couple food trucks. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Right. <laughs> it's cheaper than a caterer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got two food food trucks. It's going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah. People. Everyone loves food trucks. Exactly. That's like the, the big thing yeah. now. And I mean, I, I just wish they would stop calling it street food. Because it just yeah. doesn't sound appetizing to me. No. <laughs> food truck, fine. Yeah. Street food, not the same. So, like, ep- the whole town is uh, in on this, and it just starts to kind of snowball as to where people are starting to... So, they, get, they give her a job at one point. Yeah, she's, yeah. like, volunteering at the children's hospital. Which is hysterical. Because <laughs> <laughs> at one point, they show it, and it's literally just park her in a chair and press play on a tape recorder of a woman like, reading a book. So, what you're saying is that no one else in your town... <laughs> Wants to volunteer at the children's hospital and read books for like two hours yeah, a week. Yeah, think of the sick bald kids. <laughs> yeah, town, come like, on. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's rattling around Lars. They're sick kids. Yeah, and um, they also like, what is she like modeling or something at a at a mall? I don't know. If she was mo- they yeah they give her a job at a mall. Yeah, like I don't know. Was she modeling? I don't know. It was two days a week uh, and all day su- Saturday and. And so, basically, Lars is starting to feel some kind of way yeah. about Bianca having a schedule. And um, uh, he starts to have, like, he, I don't he know. He gets jealous. He gets real jealous real fast. And um, but I think before this, another, like, really great scene in this movie is he goes to his co-worker's party. And now Cindy, I guess she's the receptionist or something. He sees her every morning, he walks past her, and, like, the one day, I don't know if it was after, he's just like, oh, you look very pretty today, and she gives him a, an invite to the party, to yeah. her, her party, and he's still like, yeah, I don't think so. People talk, I, <laughs> I don't want to be around, and he sa- finally um, agrees to go, and he takes Bianca with him, and um, <laughs> it's so, God, it's so, this is, like, one of the more heartbreaking scenes. He's taking her up there, and he's, like, in this full suit. Yeah. He's got a vest and tie and blazer, and his hair is slicked down with a hard part. <laughs> and he goes there inside, and he's just very visibly uncomfortable. And yeah. It looks like he's about to flee at any moment, but they're all trying their best to like be real comforting and welcoming. And, and C- yeah, Cindy sent out a memo saying, Yeah. Hey, here's the situation. Right. Don't There's, be asses. Don't be asses. Although, there was one guy who is an ass. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Because, okay, you know the situation. hmm You know he thinks she's real. Mm-hmm. And yet it's a doll. Right. Why are you asking if she's flexible? Yeah. Look it up. Look it up. Like, and you know, it, it. like, don't be, just, yeah. It's just. Like, I get you're trying to, you know, oh, he's just one of the guys. But that's really creepy. Yeah. In a very specific way. It almost makes me think that, okay, that guy's got a crush on Lars. <laughs> Is she flexible, Lars? Because I am. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <coughs> so. So yeah, like, and they start to they they try to like at they're asking him about you know if he wants something to drink, and he's still like, he's like doing that like real hard squint, and is like gritting his teeth, yeah, yeah, and his like veins are look like they're gonna pop. He's getting red and sweaty, and he finally has a beer, and it's just, and then at some point he's like he and Bianca are in a corner just by themselves, and he's still looking kind of awkward, and he's starting, and I think this is the point maybe he's starting to notice Margot, who's yeah. like flirting with some dude. And he's just, you know, kind of takes notice of it and um, is kind of curious about it. And, um, but yeah, there's still like, and then, um, you know, he's sitting or, sitting there talking to Cindy and a couple other friends about Bianca's hair. And, you know, and Lars talks about, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know. care what it is yeah. as long as she's happy or yeah. something. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just, it's really sweet. And he's still, and he starts to like very slowly relax. Yeah. <laughs> like extremely slowly. <laughs> Extremely, <laughs> and um, somebody puts on 
this Talking Heads song, uh, This Must Be The Place. And it's like everybody else, and it's kind of like you know, a little more upbeat song. Da, 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 da. And everybody's like doing kind of bopping around, yeah. dancing, and you know, somebody's even like kind of dancing with Bianca, like wheeling her chair around. And Lars is like right in the middle of it, and he's doing, he's like pantomiming slow dance. He's like poised, like he's holding somebody. And his eyes are just like forced shut, just like clenched shut, and he is slow dancing. And I can't tell if he's smiling or crying or laughing. It's, yeah, it's really interesting to watch. Yeah, and it's just, and it, it makes me sad. Like, just watching him do, it's just, like, it's, so sad. It's soul crushing at some yeah, points. Yeah, it is. And it's like, you don't know if he's, like... Uncomfortable? Like, okay, I know what, this is what people do, so I'm right. going to dance. Like, I looked up dancing on YouTube, this is how they do it. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> So, um, yeah, so that was just, like, one of my, it's probably, like, my favorite scene of it in this film. Um, and, you know, and, and so, like, there's also, there's these, there's a couple of points in, without, like, they get back to work and Margot introduces her new boyfriend to Lars and he kind of, like, postures a little bit. <laughs> like, when he, he, he's like, yeah, yeah, hmm, yeah. So he's, like, feeling some kind of way about Margot's new boyfriend. Yeah. And at the same time, feeling some kind of way about Bianca having a schedule. Yeah. Here, here's my thing. At one point, I think it's before the party, Gus asks Lars, like, where they're going dressed like that or something. Is he slut-shaming her? <laughs> like, what the hell? Gus is just being a dick. Gus is dick just sake. a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Although later it turns out he's not a dick. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Like, wasn't Bianca wearing his wife's clothes? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So yes, there was this whole you know story about you know somebody stole her wheelchair. Someone stole clothes. her wheelchair and her luggage, <laughs> and so she has to wear Karen's clothes. Yeah. And, I, and it's so it's so funny when Karen's like, I don't think we're the same type. <laughs> 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 and Lars is like, I don't think she cares about superficial things like that. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So like we're starting to get this weird situation, and we're learning a lot um through. Lars's visits or Bianca's doctor's visits while Lars is talking to Dagmar. Yeah. Speaking of which, who's paying you for those? Thank you. That's what I was like. We were talking about that earlier. Me and Dan I was like, who the fuck? Like, whose insurance is going on? I'm assuming Lars has great coverage, and they're just he's paying for it. Yeah. Um. And also, like, like I feel like like Bianca racked up a lot of bills. Yeah, let's her her initial existence for yeah. one. Um, let's talk about how many wasted amounts of food that you know people fixing an extra plate for her. <laughs> um, you know the the therapy, not to mention the ambulance that comes later, yeah. and the hospital bills, and spoiler alert, the fucking burial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming, like, some of that, like, the town's like, yeah, we really like him, we'll take care of it. But, seriously, that was one of the, after I watched it, I went on Amazon just to, like, read the reviews and stuff, uh -huh. and that was one of the things brought up, like, no one in their right, no one in this town is gonna do this shit for free. <laughs> right. It's like one of the one-star reviews on Amazon. <laughs> it's like. Look, I get it's, you know, a fantasy or whatever, but no one's going to do this shit for free. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, I, and I wish, I, I just need to know exactly what the population is of this town. Like, how small is it? I'm thinking, like, smaller, or larger than the town of Northern Exposure, smaller than Twin Peaks. That's my theory. <laughs> it's, okay. That's and there's no log lady, so. Okay, well, at least there's that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and so... Um, he's, we find out that he's, and we've seen it kind of a little bit up to this point. He like dodges people touching him. Yeah. And so he seriously has a problem with people touching him. He tells Dagmar that it feels like a frostbite, I guess. Yeah. Like when your feet freeze outside and they come inside and they thaw, it feels like a burning, which, yeesh. Yeah. And we never really get down to the nitty gritty as to why that is. Yeah. And I don't. That, and then when he talks about, and maybe in that same thing. Or maybe like the next treatment mm. when he talks about when Dagmar kind of figures out, oh, 
part of this is dealing with the fact that his I'm assuming his mom had to die in childbirth mm-hmm. because he makes such a big deal about Karen. Right. And so Dagmar's like, you know, we've come a long way. Mm-hmm. Thing, and that's kind of like if I'm like psychoanalyzing this. <laughs> if his delusion is stemming from like a place of protection mm-hmm. from Karen, that's really kind of sweet in a roundabout fucked up way. Yeah, it's like you're going really off script, like really far off script. Yeah. For if that's what, if all this is about trying to be protective of Karen, because that's kind of where we get, yeah. uh, basically, but. How it is um, her lugging around that 175 pound doll? I'm sure. <laughs> they say at one point 125 pounds. 125 pounds. Yeah. Okay. 125 uh, pounds. Because <laughs> they have a fight later, and she's like, "Laura, Bianca's a big girl, yeah. Lars." <laughs> you okay? How would she feel if I just left her? If I just... Ben and her. Oh, wait, she didn't abandon you. She'll be back. How do I know that? Huh? People do whatever they want. They don't care. No, we all care. Lars, we do care. No, you don't. That is. That is just not true. God! Every person in this town bends over backwards to make Bianca feel at home. Why, why do you think she has so many places to go and so much to do? Huh? Huh? Okay. Because of you! Because all these people love you! We push her wheelchair. We drive her to work. We drive her home. We wash her. We dress her. We get her up, we put her to bed, we carry her. And she is not petite, Lars. Bianca is a big, big girl. None of this is easy for any of us, but we do it. Oh, we do it for you. So don't you dare tell me how we don't care. Like bathing her, and I think that that was a little too much. Like putting her in a full on bath. Yeah, like I'm like Lars isn't there to see this. Lar- exactly. You could have I do some want one decks on her and be happy. Like, I do want that clawfoot tub. No, oh, it was beautiful. I like know. I love that. Oh, so nice. Tub. Oh, I love clawfoot tubs. Oh, uh, so um, yeah, and so like you know, it's there's some very interesting stuff that gets uncovered when he's talking to Dagmar, and and I like her. I like Patricia's um delivery. And yeah, all. And she's, she's just, very just like. She's not trying to pry. She's just like, eh, you know, whatevs. Yeah, whatever. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. Uh, we're, we're just chilling in here while Bianca rests after her treatment. <laughs> right. We not say say no more. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, like, we're, we're getting in all into that. And then, uh, eventually, Lar- Lars and Bianca's relationship starts to decline a little bit. They're fighting. He's ye- <laughs> They're fighting more. And he's yelling. And up to this point, we've never really, like, he's very soft-spoken. And you never yeah. really hear anything. And I think the turning point, like the mo- the real important scene, is when um, Bianca has some gala or something to go to and- volunteer dinner. <laughs> yes, and Margot asks him to go bowling with her, and he's like, you know, yeah, sure, I can drop her off and then come hang out with you. And they go bowling, and um, eventually, some of the dudes that Gus works with they they come join them. Yeah, and- that's actually a really sweet scene. Yes. Yeah. Like, they are all having like the best time and he's exactly. like starting to he's he's getting more and more comfortable just like hanging out with people yeah and, and you know he's doing well he's not you know it's just it's such a great scene to just see this and that's and i feel like that's the exact moment when he decides to kill bianca off <laughs> <laughs> yeah because at that scene at the end of that scene margo and lars are talking mm. and lars is like look you know i'm i'm with Bianca, because this is after Gus and Lars have had like a talk oh, about yes. what it is to be a man, right? Which is such a fucking bullshit term, <laughs> I think. But at least it wasn't like toxic masculinity bullshit. It was, yeah, you know, just, it was solid advice of you know, uh, don't don't, don't be cheat a on dick. your woman, don't cheat on your woman. 
do what's right. Do what's right. Take care of your family. Yeah. Or at least, you know, try to do what's right. Right. Apologize when you're wrong. Shit yeah. like that. That I'm fine with. Yeah. But, um, and so. Chop some wood. Chop some wood. <laughs> <laughs> Bianca's like, oh, yeah. Or Lars is like, oh, yeah, Bianca, you need to see me chop wood. I'm really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to the bowling alley and, you know. Margo's talking to Lars, and Lars is like, look, you know, I'm I'm with Bianca, and a man doesn't cheat on her, his woman. And I'm like, oh, that's, oh. oh buddy. And then afterwards, he takes his glove off, and, like, they shake yes. hands. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, oh, you're healing. <laughs> you are healing and growing. Oh. By leaps and bounds. Yes, and I think it's the very next scene where, um. He, she wakes up and he, she, Bianca's unresponsive. Yes, she's unconscious. Wake up! He's like on top of her, screaming and shaking. And and while he's doing this, Gus is like, "No, she's okay. She's she's, okay. <laughs> she's fine. Are you sure she's unconscious? She's fine." And Karen's like, "Come on, what one?" <laughs> he's like, "What?" She's like, "I don't know what else to do." Why do I always got to know what to do? <laughs> So an ambulance comes to get this doll, and that shit is not expensive. It's not cheap at all, and um, they uh, rush her to the ER, and there's even like fucking paramedics, and there's they got oxygen masks and stuff, and they're like rolling through, and which uh, I thought that maybe they would have just taken her to Dagmar's office, but like they straight up went to the hospital, like yeah. ER, and like she's been admitted. And, um, and I'm assuming, like, it's from, like, the next town over. Yeah. So they're, like, they're... Did they get a memo, too? Like, has I... it been, how wide, how far did this reach? Well, at some point, like, before they get to the hospital, they show the hospital, and the co- or the nurses are like, they're here, Paige Dr. Dagmar. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming, like, the hospital, like, maybe the hospital is in the town, gotcha. but Dagmar, like, works in tangent with it. Yeah. I don't know. That seems about right. Yeah. And um, Lars comes out and they say like she's dying <laughs> and um you know and then like and uh, and gus and karen are concerned as to what this means like why are you killing her robin yeah. and dagmar's like yo well, i didn't do this yeah. this is all lars lars said she's dying yeah. I'm... all i'm doing is <laughs> fucking writing up your fucking invoices because this <laughs> shit is expensive <laughs> and you guys are you're by my lunch <laughs> exactly you guys are just paid for the added the addition to my house um <laughs> so um they all start to realize that okay so i guess he's getting better yeah because he's decided to kill her off and like lars and bianca and karen and gus go for a long walk near a pond and but before that they go home oh uh, okay and like they Lars is like i want to s- we're gonna stay in the pink room together right. tonight I'm like, oh, that's sweet. And I then, hope like, he didn't have sex with the dog that night. Was there? A, <laughs> am I imagining this, or was there a scene, or like a brief shot, mm. where they cut between like Lars laying down in the pink room with Bianca, mm. and then the next scene, it's dark, and there's like spooning going on. I may have missed the spooning part. Like, I remember and then the him- next scene is Gus like walking in the computer. So I'm not sure if that was supposed to be like. Karen? Huh. I don't have to go back and look at that. Yeah. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. (laughs) But, um... So, yeah, so, like, they're sitting... Shiva. (laughs) They are, because all the church ladies come, and they bring casseroles. (laughs) And they're knitting. And and a bunch of flowers show up, (laughs) which is totally adorable. (laughs) And they're knitting, and they're sitting Shiva. (laughs) And he's like, what what do we do? And they, like, fix him this very... It looks like very Pennsylvania, like... Summer, I'm pretty like, sure there was, like, ambrosia salad yes, on there. Yeah, there was, like, some sort of jello salad thing with, like, ham and, like, just, yeah. Ham. And, and he's, um, he's like, well, what do we do? And she's like, we just sit. Yeah. That's what we do. That's what people do, Lars. They come <laughs> over. When people are having a good time, they come over and sit. <laughs> and they're just sitting and knitting. Sitting and knitting. And, um, One is cross-stitching. <laughs> oh, pardon. <laughs> well, the only reason I know that is because my fiance cross stitches. Okay. So she had like the little wooden thing with the oh, yeah the pattern. Yeah. She's cross stitching. In fact, totally off topic. But my fiance's cross stitching me this awesome pattern she found on Etsy. Uh-huh. It's a sugar skull Darth Vader helmet. Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> what do you? What is it going on? What is this? We're just gonna frame it, put it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Nice. I can dig it. Um, uh, there's some place 
some some store or something or maybe somebody locally with an Etsy store and they do like these cross stitchings with like funny things like you know what the fuck you looking at <laughs> like that of things that just kind of <laughs> hang on the walls and I, I wish I could remember what the name of the company was but yeah that's good stuff um okay so Bianca finally dies yeah. peacefully by the pond Lars says his tearful goodbyes Literally, she like, drags her into the lake. <laughs> yeah, which, okay, that's, what, why? 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 He's trying to wake her up. I don't know. Because <laughs> he, he's, Drain the ep- he's in tears he's and in t- kisses her, and then. I thought maybe after that previous scene that I saw, he was like, clean her out, but. <laughs> ew, I can't believe I just made that joke. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> internet. I'm sorry. Um. So yeah, so he's like, like I don't know, was he trying to do like a Vikings funeral? <laughs> was he set, set her on fire, like, she melts. Yes, like Gus and Karen walk in, he's like got a torch lit. He's like, what? <laughs> oh. <coughs> and they have a funeral. And that said. shit is expensive. Yes, and I don't know if, you know, I don't know if they just had an open grave already and that's what they were doing, like, because they all go to a grave site after the funeral. They do. It's and a plot I point. swear, if that's fucking, <laughs> if there's a head, bo- uh, a, a, a headstone that pops, like, okay, he sends his goodbyes, they have the thing, the burial, blah, blah, blah. Margo's there. He and Margo decide to go out. Finn. End of movie. Yes. Let's talk about how shit this is, how <laughs> expensive this shit is. <laughs> exactly. My concern, my biggest concern here is, is that, um. one, is there some sort of a headstone? Is that going to happen? <laughs> Two, if he and Margo do go out is he going to bring up bianca like she was a real ex-girlfriend like is it going to be uh, like like not to say that people bring up ex-girlfriends a lot but it's like is this go- is it going to continue to be like a real memory for him like a I real don't thing know. a real relationship that's oh and is I, he going god to i hope not visit this grave <laughs> where i buried this hunk of plastic <laughs> There's, like, this this town, like, they have got to be, like, either this family has, like, great, has a lot of money yeah. squirreled away somewhere for Lars and his crazy, or this <laughs> town just is really just, loves yeah, Lars. Yeah, and they're just like, ah, it's on the house. Oh, yeah. no big deal. All right, so. here's my theory. Creepy guy from work's going to come back to look at the grave of Tapioca. <laughs> That's my fifth. <laughs> yeah, what did they actually do with the, because it's a, it's not a cheap doll. Yeah. Six thousand bucks. Yeah. I don't <laughs> Lars tries to return it. It's defective. It's got dirt in it. <laughs> it's defective. She died. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah, uh so there's a couple of fun little facts about this. Uh to help Ryan stay in character, the real doll was treated like an actual person as it is done uh, by the characters in the movie. She was dressed privately in her own trailer and was only present for scenes that she was in. Well, that's nice. Interesting, yes. And um, the scene where Lars and Bianca are about to enter the party was entirely improvised by Gosling, where he talks about how, um, you know, uh, it's scientifically proven that everyone's favorite word is their own name. So if you just say someone's name over and over again, they'll like you. Yeah. And um, also improvised was when he performed CPR on Margot's teddy bear. Aww. Yeah, that's just the sweetest. That is the sweetest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that Talking Head song, This Must Be The Place, uh, actually that was Ryan's call. He brought the cassette in to play at the party scene because he thought it would be cool for the scene. Okay, then. Way to go, Goss. So, how would you rate this movie? One to five. One to five? I'd three. Three. Three to four. Three or, wow. Okay, so three, three and a half. Three and a half, yeah. the difference. It's a good movie. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. A little I, bit too on the nose weird. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Okay. Cool. It um, bothers me that this town spent all this money. For, yeah, that yeah. is bothersome. And I don't think I ever, like, as many times as I've seen this, I don't think I've ever thought about that until today when I watched it. It's like, how? Why are all these people like, why? This is a lot of money being wasted. Exactly. A lot of resources being thrown down the drain. Because exactly. if you think about it, okay, so to keep up the charade, you know, the town's like, oh, we'll give Bianca a job, which means she had to be getting paychecks. <laughs> so who are those getting made out to? Exactly. Who's who are those getting made out? Who's getting made out, though? Mid, I can't talk. Who's, <laughs> who's writing those? Who approved that? 
how are they cashing them? Because there's no Bianca. It's there's maybe there's at some point somebody made Bianca a driver's license (laughs) (laughs) or or an ID, a state ID, because I mean, she I guess she wouldn't be able to drive or you know whatever. Just um, so I uh, I'm gonna give it a four and a half. Just um, and I don't even know why not. Five. I'm just going five. I can't oh. do it. Like, I'm sorry. I just, I just got to go all the way because this is my shit. I love this movie. Um, Ryan's performance is awesome. It's really one to, nuanced. One to five? Eh, five. Five. Yes. yes. It's lovely. Yes. Um, I think this is one of his best works. Uh, are you down to watch it again? I'll watch it again, yeah. Of course. I'm going to watch it again. And if you guys are interested in watching Lars and the Real Girl, um, it is for rent on Amazon right now and iTunes. Um. It's not streaming on Netflix right now, which we found out the hard way. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I spent money to be the, on this. Yes, yeah. and um, that's I how much I, I love you. Camila I and I love this podcast. I love you for that. Um, yeah, it was. Thanks on. to my brother for the gift card. <laughs> <laughs> it was streaming on Netflix for like the longest time it too. Wasn't, and now it's gone. <laughs> Um, and we already talked about that it does pass the Bechtel test. And for those of you who aren't familiar, the Bechtel test is uh, kind of a movie measure. It's a, t- it's a type of litmus test to assess the presence of women in movies. And it originated from Alison Bechtel. She had a comic called Dykes to Watch Out For in 1985. And the rules are as follows. It has to have at least two named women in it. Yes, there are plenty of named women in this. And the specific scene that we were talking about, Karen is at t- out to lunch with three of her girlfriends. And they talk to each other, yes, about something besides a man. They're talking about Bianca. Yeah. Um, and the Gosling Gage. Does he sing or dance? Yes. Yes. He sings in a tree to Bianca. Yeah. Which, kind of, he uses her voice there, I think. As, I was wondering. Like, yeah. Like, if that's what he was doing. Like, they were singing together. Yeah. Because he was going, like, back and forth between a manly and a man. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's your manly voice? No, sorry. I, <laughs> He was going, love, love is for the better. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then he stops, turns around, and goes, Oh, you should watch me chop a little. Really good at that. <laughs> and then goes right back into the singing. Like, it's so random. Like, you would say that to anybody. I'm like, You should watch me chop wood. That's, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, that's how, that's my pickup line for my fiance. And that's how we've got to Exactly. <laughs> I messenger her okay, keep it. I'm like, You should watch me chop wood sometime. <laughs> She's like sold, <laughs> done. I want to spend the rest of my life together. Exactly. <laughs> and um, he slow dances alone at the party. Is this character eccentric? <laughs> 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 yes. <clears throat> um, does he disappear into character? Yes. Yeah. Like all those mannerisms, the weird mannerisms, the weird and the blinking. facial tics. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I'm pretty sure uh, Neil Patrick Harris stole that for Doctor Horrible. Yeah. Interesting. He, he blinks a lot. Yeah. Hmm. All right. And I think uh, Ryan gained a little weight for this role, too. Um, also, character smug level. I don't have to go. Like, he's not smug at all. Yeah, like, like zero. Zero. And is this character sexually attractive? No. no. <laughs> I mean, not. I mean, not. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. bro. It's just not. I would, I would very much. I would sit and eat lunch with you at work if we worked together. <laughs> But, nice pleasant guy. Yeah, you know, I'd say but, hello to you. Maybe share a couple office memes, <laughs> back and forth, some cat videos. Cat but, videos. But uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> that's as far as we're going. Indeed. Now oh. it's your favorite part. Uh huh. The one hundred. Defined reasons. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> one hundred reasons to love Ryan Gosling. The what RBA? Because when I, last time I was here, we were only at like six. Yes, today we are at forty-five. Oh. <laughs> All right. He's not a Mormon. That's just rude. <laughs> well, here's the reasoning. Okay, give me the reasoning. All right, he somehow managed to grow up not a Mormon in a Mormon household. In his own words, I wasn't really Mormon. My parents were. My mom was really cool. She said, this is an option that isn't the only option. This is an idea, but this isn't the only idea. You have to find your own truth. When asked about Mormonism, Gossa said, I never really could identify with it. That's lucky because one thing Mormons ain't allowed to do is watch R-rated movies. And I'm guessing that rule also prohibits Mormons from appearing in them. So this is all very selfish reasons as to why. <laughs> I don't. Okay, number 46. But he could play a Mormon. Dare we hope that maybe, maybe, maybe the Ryling would consider putting his singing, dancing, comedy, and ex-Mormon skills to good use by appearing in a future movie version of the Book of Mormon? And please, can he be naked in it? Okay, A, there's no 
nudity in the Book of Mormon. Okay. Um, but I would totally watch that movie if it's happening. <laughs> um, professor does not agree with me. <laughs> did you go? Was it only playing on Broadway? Oh uh, no, they did a tour. It's been okay. to Pittsburgh a couple times. Have you seen it? Oh yeah, it's was hysterical. It? Yeah. Yeah. I never saw it. I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's really good. I'm. You're gonna get me with any musical that has a character called General Butt Fucking Naked. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's hysterical. <laughs> um, number number forty seven. He has his priorities straight. Sometimes I think that the one thing I love most about being an adult is the right to buy candy whenever and wherever I want. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. <laughs> priorities. Yeah, candy for breakfast. <laughs> number forty eight. He's found his funny. I don't like to be entertaining. I don't like the feeling of being entertaining. If there was a musical or comedy that was not just for entertainment, but was rooted in something I could relate to on a real level, then I think I would do it. Thank God Ryan could relate to Jacob, the egocentric womanizer, with a penchant for nudity, or we not, or we have no crazy, stupid love. Ooh. That's a horrible sentence. Yeah, if there was a musical or comedy that was not just for entertainment, but was rooted in something I could relate to on a real level, then I think I would do it. That makes no sense. Okay. Number 49. Yeah. He believes in marriage equality, and he has the t-shirt to prove it, but hands off, guys. Just because he approves of dudes marrying dudes doesn't mean he's he isn't going to marry a girl, a.k.a. me. <laughs> Sorry, that's... <laughs> Yeah, that's five. That, okay. is, that is from the Book of the Gosling. <laughs> so, Andrew. Yes. Once again, thank you for joining me and on this journey <laughs> of Gosling. Once again, thank I, you for having me. <laughs> Do you have anything that you would like to promote or shout out? No. Nah, not I'm, yet? Not yet. I'm. It's early in the year. I'm just relaxing. I keep hitting you. I'm sorry. That's fine. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, once you guys can follow Down to Watch at DTW Podcast on Twitter, Down to Watch Facebook page, and um, if you have any questions or suggestions, you can send an email to Down to Watch Podcast at Gmail.